Hi, I'm Nakia Malicio, the founder of NKM Consulting Group, LLC. I just exposed my business on BizLinks TV Networks. Learn more about stepping outside of your comfort zone and doing more to achieve your business goals. Coming up on my episode of That's My Biz on BizLinks.TV. That's My Biz is sponsored by Visita Live Site and Constant Contact. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of That's My Biz. I'm Pamela Alexander, your host, and you know, as always, we enjoy bringing to you the wonderful businesses, nonprofits, and associations that we meet when we're out there networking. We want you to know about all these businesses because they just bring you so much value, whether you're a business or whether you're um, a consumer, there's an opportunity for you to learn something here today. We want to make sure that you check us out at www.bizlinks.tv. Also, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash bizlinkstv. Give us some thumbs up, give us some likes, and give us some comments on the episodes as well. Ask some questions to our guests. We certainly would appreciate it. And then, you know, you can check us out on all of our other social media properties, Facebook, Instagram. You know where to find us. It's always BizLinks TV. I want to introduce you to our guest today. We have Mr. Nakia Melissio. Welcome. Um, hello. How are you today? Doing great. Doing great. Now, he is with NKM Consulting LLC, Consulting Group LLC, and his business is all about helping other businesses. He helps them through human capital organizational development, leadership is just all about helping you grow your business and taking your business to just another level. I want you to say the next, another level. So with that, I first want to get in and ask you, so when you started NKM Consulting Group, what inspired you to be an entrepreneur? Oh, I've always had a passion and a desire to help people. Um, and on the onset, and when I was trying to start my business, I, I saw that there was a lack of passion and desire for other people to help other people, and so that was kind of the catalyst uh, for me starting my business. Okay, wow, yeah. wow. And so now, we know entrepreneurship is, is not an easy road, no, so, and, you know, kind not. of, tell me some of the first decisions that you had to make in, in even the type of business that you were going to do. Well, the first thing that I had to do was just do an evaluation of myself and whether or not I had the actual talent, skills, and the education um, and the resources to be able to launch the business that I was thinking about launching. Okay. Um, so it actually went from con from conception to actually launching it. It was probably about a 12 to 14 month okay. uh, time span because there were some things that I kind of needed to go back and do, retrain myself. Um, re-educate myself in some areas that so to make sure that I was equipped to be able to serve the business community. Okay, we love that. So now you already know. So I, I know you whipped right. out your, your right. pencils and papers, and we right. tell you to do that right. every episode because <laughs> you're going to get a lot of great right. information today <laughs> because I'm already hearing a lot of what you need to be thinking about and starting a business, right. and we have a lot of startup right. businesses that uh, watch the show. Mm -hmm. And so with them, you know, and you're talking about evaluating yourself and evaluating, um, you know, the business that you're going to do and if you have the resources and all all of that um, you know one of our favorite books is e myth right. and in just talking about should you be an entrepreneur right. in the first place <laughs> right. so tell me in some of that evaluation what were the things that you considered on should you go forward with this or was it like a lot of entrepreneurs that you know I love doing this and I'm gonna do it well you know there's a common thing in business called a SWAT which mm -hmm. is your strengths your weaknesses your opportunities and your threats okay. and what I began to do is is I took the opportunity to mind where the issues were to look where the gaps are mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of uh, where I kind of started and say okay you know here's the areas here's the gaps here's where I can fill those gaps okay. um, and let me begin to create a space for me to market myself um, so that I can let other businesses know here are the gaps in your okay. particular business okay. and here's how my business can actually help you where the gaps are in your okay. particular business. Okay. That's great. So you all heard it, the SWOT right. analysis. Make sure that you, you write that one down. Strengths, weaknesses. Strengths, weaknesses, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Threat. Fantastic. So those are right. things you want to start considering. Right. So, you know, it really isn't, you mean to tell me, it's not, you know, you're really good at XYZ. You should start a business doing XYZ. Right. It's not that simple. No, it's not, it's not that simple. I think that people get enamored with the prospect of business mm -hmm. and making money um, that they forget that there's so many moving parts to mm -hmm. that machine mm -hmm. um, and that they really have to take the time to do not only a self-assessment but an assessment of the business that you're trying to get into the climate um, to the economic climate and the political mm -hmm. climate as well because all of these variables do affect whether or not your business can actually be okay. a success or not a success exactly. um, so e even lenders have a climate on when they lend the type of businesses that they're mm -hmm. actually going to fund um, based off of previous 
this data that they've used prior in in lending in certain in okay. area yeah. uh, particular areas. And yeah. So yeah. Wow. So yeah. so y'all 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 stop listening to everybody around because <laughs> it's just telling you to start a business. Because right, right. I know one thing that I always say to people when they're telling me they want to start a business is you have to love running a business. Right. It's not just loving that one thing because you're not going to be doing that too right. long if you're going to grow because you're going to have right. to hand that off to somebody right. else. Right. Yeah. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. You're wow. Absolutely that's right. something. So now with what you do, so in talking about the coaching side mm -hmm. of business, should every business have a, a coach? Every business needs to have a business coach, an executive coach, and a, I call it, I have a program called an executive mentoring program. Okay. Um, and that program is designed for mid-level managers okay. who are moving up the chain through succession and okay. taking VP positions because, you know, the higher up the food chain you get, there it's a different monster and it's right. a different animal. Right. Um, so businesses that take advantage of executive coaching, business coaching, mm -hmm. um, have a likelihood of being a success as, okay. as opposed to companies that don't. Okay. Um, because... Kids that come out of school, yeah, they have the degree, they have the education, mm -hmm. but there is a skills gap there. Mm -hmm. um, and so what coaching does is it comes in and helps fill that gap. Okay. And it helps if they're deficient in communication skills mm -hmm. or um, they have a problem with addressing issues mm -hmm. or problem solving. Um, coaching creates an environment for them okay. to be able to um, work on those particular okay. issues so that they can, in fact, be a better employee. Okay, so now what about startups that where it's just them? Mm -hmm. um, and how does coaching work with them? Do they still get an executive coach? Absolutely. Okay. I, th I think at the s when businesses are starting up, mm -hmm. I think it is a really good place mm -hmm. for, for new startups to get a coach. Okay. Um, and the reason being is because it's like uh, you get a chance to work through all of your issues with a coach because they've been there, done that, and seen that. Okay. So you get an opportunity to not only look at um, the business model as a whole, um, but you get an opportunity to say, okay, here's where my business is deficient. Mm -hmm. And then a coach can come along and say, hey, okay, here's the type of talent you need to drive this organization. Okay. Um, because I believe human capital is by far the most valuable part of any yes. organization. Mm -hmm. um, and organizations that do not invest in your talent mm -hmm. um, it is 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 going to be out of business real right. soon. Right. Uh, people think that it's it's the product that you push. No, mm -hmm. it's the people that make that organization work. Mm -hmm. So we, we love that because we right. know, we always tell business, right. you know, you've got to build a team. Exactly. Even if you're a small business, whether it's an employee or whether it's a contractor, exactly. you know, you've got to build a team. You can't do it all yourself. Exactly. Right. Now let's exactly. talk about some mm -hmm. of the DIY folk. Okay. Um, now, uh -oh. I, now, I love some DIY. <laughs> right. uh, do it yourself for those that right. are going, what's she talking about? Right. I love <laughs> the things that I can do myself, right. but I also know just because I can do it doesn't mean that I should do it, right. but I know we have a lot of business, especially startups mm -hmm. or small businesses mm -hmm. that don't quite have the, the funds yet to right. put into just paying for something, right. so then they kind of take on what can I do, with, right. do myself. Right. Um, share a little bit of what you talk with with the business about that. Um, well, I, I advise businesses to find someone that's in your space mm -hmm. and Maybe barter services. Maybe okay. you may be good at something that that particular individual is not, okay. and you guys can actually swap services. Okay. And I think when you take the time to swap services, then you're getting a chance to 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 not only grow your business, mm -hmm. but you're actually getting information. You're being trained. You're getting an opportunity to see how the other person how they do what they do, okay. um, so that you can in turn learn to adopt that into your own business strategy. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right. hopefully, again, some some good ideas there. Right. Now let's talk about about uh, and staying kind of with just the beginning phases of mm -hmm. a business. Um, so we talk about you've got to doing that SWOT analysis, mm -hmm. really kind of understanding right. where you are and your strengths and weaknesses and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, then let's talk about that business plan. Because okay. I know so many businesses right. still don't have <laughs> right. a business plan or right. a lot of people feel, well, I don't need it if I'm not trying to get a loan from right. the bank. Right. Um, what do you say to that? I think every business needs to do a business plan. Do <laughs> not not do a business business plan. I can't tell you how many times I mentor people that come mm -hmm. in and they want to start a business. And, you know, I, one of my favorite quotes is by Albert Einstein, if you can't take something complex and explain it simple, you don't understand it well enough. Mm -hmm. And I think what a business plan does is it takes this complex ideal in your head mm -hmm. and it, it explains it into a simplistic way okay. that where any lender, an investor, or anybody that wants to partner with your business, they can understand it. Mm -hmm. um, now, the second part to that is, is that a business plan is a living organism. Okay. Um, it will continue to grow. It will continue to evolve over time. Um, um, because as you your business 
uh, changes, your business model will change. You should change because mm-hmm. it'll grow. Okay. But you need to have some foundation okay. um, to know where you are so that you can know where you're trying to okay. go. And then s- sticking to it to some degree, right, or at least seeing, because mm-hmm. I know there's a school of thought of, mm-hmm. um, you know, you implement something and you make a quick determination whether it works or not, and right. then you, you you change it if it's right. not working. Right. But you've got to stick with it long enough to, to make right. sure that, to give it time to work. Right. Right. Okay, so the right. advertising, for example, we know a lot of people, um, you know, they kind of want to do an ad, but they want to do right. a one-time ad, right. you know, and right. we tell them it, it takes at least seven touches even more now right. because of social media right. and all the other medium that's out there, but that, you know, you've got to get, things don't happen overnight. No, they don't. Right. They don't. So now we see these businesses out there that seem to be uh, these these quick overnight success, and we know right. it takes years to become overnight success, right. but a lot of them that have kind of found this thing and then they all of a sudden grow. But we know that's a small percentage right. of businesses that that happens to. Um, they talk about uh, how many businesses mm-hmm. fail in the first five years. I think it is um, yeah. some some high percentage. Right. Of I think it's like I think it's like seventy percent or sixty yeah. percent. Yeah, it's really really high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how does a business kind of in those first five years, um, because we know they don't mm-hmm. initially don't make a profit first couple of years, right. how right. do they kind of sustain in order to kind of hit go over that first plateau? Right. You know, I'm backtrack for a second. You mentioned the business plan. Mm-hmm. One of, when when in doing a business plan, okay. I think it's important to do your feasibility. Okay. Um, your feasibility will give you the. the I'm very data driven. Okay. Uh, because numbers and statistics they tell a story, mm-hmm. um, and if you're good at interpreting that, it, it can really give you a good. Um, roadmap okay. going forward as okay. to what are the potential landmines um, and going forward. Now, businesses that are trying to grow and businesses that actually fail, um, businesses that grow, they find out who their customer is mm-hmm. and they know who their customer mm-hmm. is and they build a campaign mm-hmm. around that customer. Um, businesses that fail do not know who their customer is and do not know what their product is. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, they don't know how to push it. Um, I was at a speaking engagement one time, and... We were the, the question came up about marketing, mm-hmm. um, and I was had a water bottle in my hand, mm-hmm. and I said the the biggest mistake that people do with marketing is mm-hmm. is they want to push the the work the water bottle instead of creating finding out what's unique about their particular business mm-hmm. and creating a marketing strategy around that, okay. as opposed to saying here's my water bottle, okay. buy my water bottle. Okay. Why should I buy your water bottle when there's fifty other different versions right. of this water bottle? Right. What is unique about your water bottle? Yeah. It's kind of like um, you know if you look at the Apple versus the Samsung mm-hmm. the marketing strategy. Mm-hmm. It's you know Apple. The Apple iPhone is never the center of the of the commercial. Mm-hmm. It's always about the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But if you look at like Samsung, Samsung's phone is the focus of okay. the of the commercial. And so that's the fundamental mm-hmm. difference between Apple and Samsung. Okay. They they know who their customer is okay. and they market to that particular thing. So every business needs to spend time um, looking at the data to see what their customers are buying, mm-hmm. how they're buying, how they're spending their money, where, what social media sites or what websites are they looking, mm-hmm. and take that, that data mm-hmm. and, and then incorporate it into their market strategy. Mm-hmm. And there are plenty of other um, predictive analytic models mm-hmm. out there that can help businesses um, identify their particular customer. Okay, and I mean, this is huge, especially because we talk right. about right. target audience all right. the time and your right. target market and really knowing and defining who that right. is. And I love that you said, and then it also shows people, a lot of times people don't know their product. Right. So many times we run into business when right. we're networking with them and they're doing one thing today, but then maybe they do another right. thing or right. kind right. of an opportunity comes right. along exactly. and you don't want to turn down money. Exactly. And someone asks you to do something else. It's not quite what your specific model is, right. but it's in the area, right. and you take that project right. on. Right. 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 But then you stop yourself from being able to do more of what it is that you truly do. Exactly. But when you don't know exactly. that that mod that product, exactly. you know you're, you're susceptible to that. And exactly. so it, with that, it segues me, segues me to mm-hmm. one of the most important okay. words: is saying no sometimes. Right. And that's a challenge for businesses right. as well. It is, you know, and because sometimes your business is just not prepared to take on certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, and you you may get a big contract that comes mm-hmm. across your, your desk, mm-hmm. and you may say, this is have a great dollar amount, mm-hmm. a great value to it, right. and you're like, hey, we can do this. Yeah. But yet, when you look at your business model, it's not stable or strong enough, mm-hmm. and you don't have the team, the support, and the resources mm-hmm. to actually execute that contract or to execute that business deal. 
Um, so you, you have to sometimes, one of my favorite things is that I tell my coaching clients is, is sometimes you've got to slow down to speed up. Too okay. often it's like the analogy of it, saying I want to go on a country ride because mm-hmm. I want to enjoy the scenery. Yeah. Then you get in a car and you're on this road and you're doing 90 miles an hour and you're like this the whole time right. trying to, you know, right. see if I'm going to enjoy the scenery. Right. But, <laughs> but you, you, you miss all the view right. and, you know, it defeats the purpose. So mm-hmm. if you take the time to slow down and get an opportunity to see what's going mm-hmm. on, um, to see the trees, to see yeah. the flowers. And I think the same thing is true for business. If Sometimes if you slow down and say, hey, this is where I am. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not able to move forward with this contract yet. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you'd be, you'd be surprised. They'll say, well, how about we break this up in sections and parts for you okay. um, because we do believe that there's value to okay. what you bring. Um, I think my biggest thing with businesses is, is, is be honest about mm-hmm. where you are mm-hmm. um, and don't take on too much. Okay, okay. So everyone, we're getting right. some, some good information, some great right. notes. I hope you're taking a lot of great notes. Now, before we go to break, right. uh, tell everyone how they can get in touch with you. Oh, yeah, you can go to com, and that's N A K I A. M E L E C I O dot com. Fantastic. Everyone, we're having a good time. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about I know the thing that you want me to ask about, and that's going to be the money. So we'll be right back after this break. Right. See that woman? She's not just someone who can make a Cancun vacation tax deductible, she's a marketer. Sharon uses constant contact email to maintain and build relationships. She sends her clients professional newsletters. And she can see who opens and clicks on them, so she knows what's working. It's not just those fast fingers that keep Sharon's clients flocking back. Sharon's a marketer, and all it took was constant contact. Try it free. Visita provides a complete business calendar, fully integrated with your client scheduling experience. You can view and manage your daily schedule, and any upcoming meetings, and most importantly, schedule new appointments and follow-ups with your clients. Using VC to Calendar for client scheduling will save you time and deliver a better service to your clients. VC to Calendar automatically syncs with your existing calendar on Google, Outlook, iPhone, and more. Welcome back, everyone. Before the break, we were having a great time just talking about building businesses. We, of course, first want to thank our sponsors. We know without you it wouldn't be possible, but we also know without you, our viewers, this wouldn't be possible. Thank you so much for continuing to support our show and continuing to support the businesses uh, that we're bringing on the show. If there's some businesses that you want to, to meet, make sure you send us a message and let us know about that as well. Now, we were talking now We're talking to Mr. Nakia Melissio yes. with NKM Consulting Group in Co- LLC. And we're just talking about some good growing your business. If you just join us, make sure that you pull out your your paper, your notes, because we're talking some good stuff. And we're getting into the question I know that everyone wants me to ask about. We want to ask about the money. So when we talk about businesses, businesses starting up, one of the first challenges is, one, how much money do I need to start up? How do I get that money? Right. And then I want to get into for businesses that more established businesses right. that need that extra kind of right. push now with right. with money. Kind of where do, where do they go? Where do they start? Oh wow! I I I say first do an in house inventory okay. of what you have available from a resource standpoint. Okay. Um, no matter where you go, whether it be a bank, a venture capitalist, or your family, mm-hmm. um, the question is well, how much have you invested into your right. business? Um, and I think that the, you if you take an opportunity to look at um, some assets that you have. There's some very simple things that you can do um, to get your business up and going for very little cost. Okay. Um, you know, I'm a big proponent of starting a business off lean mm-hmm. um, and try to be as much debt free as possible, mm-hmm. um, so that you can have a business that, that can actually be scalable. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So in in growing it, well, I guess. Mm-hmm. So we know we don't necessarily have to always go the, the loan route. Right, correct. Okay. Now, for those that do need or they just need larger, depending on what type of business it is, right. and they need kind of that funding, what are the things that they need to have in place? What are the banks looking for today? Well, banks are looking for, and I know that accountants, if you're an accountant, you're listening, stop telling them to deduct everything. <laughs> banks want to see cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to be able to see if your business actually can pay its bills, mm-hmm. pay its employees, have ability to grow. Um, so in being able to uh, get cash and get funding, you want to make sure that you have at least a credit score of 700 or north. Okay. Um, that will put you in a good 
opportunity to to okay. get some funding. Um, you got to make sure that you have some personal assets okay. that you can, if you do need to use it for collateral. Okay. Um, banks generally want to see two to three years of personal tax returns. Okay. Um, if you're in business, they want to see three years, two to three years of business mm-hmm. tax returns, mm-hmm. um, and they want to see your business plan, your model. Mm-hmm. And they also, and I mentioned earlier about making sure that you have the right team. They want to make sure that the team that you have mm-hmm. necessarily has the skill sets to be able to drive that organization. Okay. That is just as important okay. um, as having a solid business plan okay. and a solid credit score. Okay. Well, now I'll tell you, because some of this always, when we get to this part right. of the, right. the interview, <laughs> this is the part that we always get feedback on. Right. That's a challenge when we're talking about, especially micro entrepreneurs right. uh, who are starting up, you know, just because with the, the what happened with the market and everything, right. well, more businesses started up because right. a lot of people lost their jobs. Right. But everyone's not quite in that ideal right. position for right. starting a business, but, right. you know, they, they want right. to move forward with that. Right. Um, kind of what are some of the things people can do to get themselves maybe to mm-hmm. that point of an okay. Improving their credit, especially business credit. Right. Talk about that a little bit. Well, there, there, there's a a, a company called Dun and Bradstreet, mm-hmm. which is is basically your credit report for businesses. Okay. Um, and I think that if you have a business, you need to do things. If it's if you're buying supplies, mm-hmm. or if you have a cell phone or mm-hmm. business credit card or anything like that, have that type of item and report it to your Dun and Bradstreet because that'll help build business okay. credit. Um, now, from a personal credit standpoint, um, I suggest that you. Pull your credit mu- credit report at least 12 months okay. prior to applying for a business loan. Now, this is okay. my disclaimer, okay. my thing, um, because if there are some issues, you want the time to actually be able to correct those things, okay. dispute those things, because there's most credit reports have some inaccurate information, mm-hmm. um, and it can be the difference between anywhere from 15 to 25 points on your credit score, right. which can mean the difference between actually getting approved for the loan or right. actually getting declined for the loan. Right. Um, and there is an opportunity out there for small business owners mm-hmm. to take advantage of capital, um, like for instance, like micro lenders mm-hmm. um, are, are propping up all over, or st- um, starting up all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, you got companies like On Deck, you got mm-hmm. companies like Cabbage, um, okay. you got Celtic Bank. All these companies that are designed for the small business owners, and sometimes they go anywhere from fifty thousand to two hundred fifty thousand. So okay. there is space out there for okay. s- new startup businesses to actually uh, take av- advantage of funds if they're going that direction. Um, and some of these micro lenders, it's simple as it's just a business plan and your credit score. Okay. Um, you know, they all reserve the right to, you know, set what they require. Um, but banks are typically going to be a little bit of a challenge okay. for new business owners. Okay, okay. Right. So now, mm-hmm. I know what all of this leads to, and I think that the true underlying message is you've got to get educated. Right to run a business and you're going to be a successful business, you've got to get and you've got to invest in yourself and in your business. What are some of the resources that are available? One, of course, you want to go to NK Consulting Group. and then Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) While we're at it, go and tell them how to get in touch with you again. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, you can uh, reach me at www.nakiamalicio.com and that's N-A-K-I-A-M-E-L-E-C-I-O.com. Cool. So now tell them also, what are some other resources that they can tap into to just learn how to grow their business, learn how to figure out that target market, learn, right. you know, how to get funding, all of right. that? Well, there's a great organization that I actually am a volunteer that mm-hmm. I mentor, and that's SCORE. Mm-hmm. Um, SCORE is a great oper- uh, a great place for new business owners, mm-hmm. even existing business okay. owners, to come in to get the resources they mm-hmm. need, the information they need, and how to launch their business, mm-hmm. grow their business, market their business. Yeah. Um, we have awesome mentors yeah. and tons of tools yeah. that can help them. Mm-hmm. Um, from a personal standpoint, you mentioned, uh, we were talking, I mentioned credit. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not familiar with OperationHope.org. Yeah. Um, okay. It's a great place. Like if you, they have great tools in helping um, people rebuild their credit, helping okay. people, you know, understand having financial literacy. Mm-hmm. So that could actually be a great place too. Um, and they're a nonprofit organization yeah. as well. Um, so if you're not sure about your credit or even how to read your credit mm-hmm. report, um, that can be a great place that you can okay. take advantage of okay. um, to of their resources because they're committed to helping particularly uh, minority communities mm-hmm. um, you know hit that 700 credit score okay. mark yeah. okay see I told y'all we deliver on our promise we're going to bring you some good information for both right. businesses and right. for consumers as well sure. Operation Hope great resource there right. and then also SCORE you've heard us talk about them on right. this show before great to tap into the consultants themselves right. are free, free for you to 
tap into, that is huge. Absolutely. Yeah, and then they have great classes that are nominally priced. So, I mean, you just, you can't beat it. You learn so much and you've got to, again, invest in yourself, invest in your business if you're going to grow it. Now, another area Mm -hmm. that's, I know it's it's always been there, but it just seems to even be more prevalent now now when you're talking about small and mid-sized businesses Mm -hmm. is government contracting. Correct. Talk a little bit about how businesses can, why should they get into government contracting and then how do they do it? You know, I tell every small business, Mm -hmm. if you need to register your business with the federal government. They are the largest purchasers of goods and services. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there are opportunities that, especially for, you know, a minority-owned business, Mm -hmm. um, women-owned small business certification, there's the 8A program, there's the HUD HUD zone program, Mm -hmm. um, there's the uh, disabled veterans program. Mm -hmm. Um, There's tons of programs out there that for minority-owned businesses to take advantage of. So let me tell you how how it works. If Every year, the federal government sets aside a certain percentage of their overall budget. And that overall budget, like take, for instance, women-owned small business certification, Mm -hmm. is 3%. Mm -hmm. So if there's a contract that's available, say Coca-Cola or somebody like that has a contract, by law, they have to, in turn, take a portion of that contract, bid it out to a women-owned small business certification if, in fact, Mm -hmm. they are participating in that. So it's it's to a minority-owned business advantage Mm -hmm. to take advantage of government contracting Mm -hmm. Um, because it is a big, big space, and there's tons of money in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying that it's an, it's an easy thing to do, right. uh, because there are certain requirements that mm-hmm. you need to meet in order to be able to mm-hmm. register your business, do business with the federal mm-hmm. government, having the capability to be able to do business mm-hmm. with the government. Uh, but I, I tell every business they need to take advantage of government contracting, uh, because there's a lot of money in that space. Yeah. I have several clients that I'm mentoring right now. Um, one of them, they're a small firm, three people. They're doing seven and a half million dollars a year in federal contracting. And by another firm, they're doing three and a half million. And another firm, they're doing five million. And all they do is government contracting. You know, so it it, it took time, but now they're in that space and yeah. their goods and services are, mm-hmm. and it's everything from yeah. HR to, um, to uh, if it's, it's engineering or mm-hmm. if, it's, it's, if it's electrical, if it's mm-hmm. IT, the government buys all kinds of yeah. goods and services. Yeah. And so you just need to take advantage of government contracting. Wow. There's a lot of great opportunities right. out there. And, you know, we mm-hmm. network with a lot of procurement officers, and mm-hmm. we often hear that they still have a hard time sometimes finding the businesses right. To, you know, for those that are bidding right. for those contracts, that right. they're not bidding for the contracts. Right. You know, they're looking for you out right. there. So, they are. you know, <laughs> they are. So, take the time again, go to these right. organizations like SCORE, learn more about it. There's a lot of right. other great organizations right. out there. We know the National Association of Women Owned Small Businesses is fantastic yeah. with helping businesses, exactly. and not even just women businesses, but helping right. businesses with contracts and getting prepared for exactly. it. Of course, I know you can go to Nakia, so make sure that right. you reach out to him first and learn what it is that you. You need to know, but exactly. you know, go for it. Like you said, it's right. going to take time. Right. We're not saying it's easy, right. <laughs> but it can be done. It can be done. Yeah. It can be done. And, it, and the SBA is a great resource for okay. that um, as well mm-hmm. to learn more about government contracting. That is something I tell you. So now, in talking about the minority businesses, mm-hmm. um, tell me a little bit. What are some of the challenges? Because I know it's 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 we're a minority business too. Right. Um, so right. we know there's some different challenges out there. What are some of the challenges that you've uncovered related to minorities doing doing business? I, I am. I try to get minority businesses mm-hmm. to step outside county, state, okay. United States, mm-hmm. think global, mm-hmm. um, okay. because the, the opportunities are available. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, obviously, if you have a barbershop, obviously yeah, you can't right. take it to, you know, right. to South Africa yeah, or yeah. something like that. But when you look at the funding mm-hmm. and all of the innovation and the technology mm-hmm. and the things that are taking place mm-hmm. in the business world, mm-hmm. I think that for, and and especially businesses that want to create opportunities um, within their community and create opportunities that have good paying jobs, Mm -hmm. that where people can actually take care of their families, reinvest them back into communities, I think that's the biggest thing. So think beyond where you are um, in larger territory so that it can be something that can, it it can be good. You Mm -hmm. know, one of the conversations... um, in uh, the World Economic Forum this mm-hmm. past year in Davos, uh, uh, Switzerland, okay. um, one of the conversations was, uh, what would we do in a world without work? Um, and the whole conversation was surrounded around innovation, technology, mm-hmm. and startup businesses. Mm-hmm. And 
the thing that stood that stood out to me was mm-hmm. startup businesses, okay. and I think that we're in a space now where the world is connected more than it has ever been yeah. in the history of man, mm-hmm. um, and to be able to take advantage of that. Um, you know, we're in what is called the fourth industrial revolution right mm, now, okay. um, where okay. everything is 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 cyber okay. and yeah. AI, mm-hmm. artificial intelligence, yeah. and social media is heading that direction, um, so that the customer can have a more of an interactive mm-hmm. experience where you can literally do work from your home straight to Singapore, you know, yeah. and so that's why I say open up your business to to not just the United States mm-hmm. or your local area, but the world. Wow. We really love that. We right. love that you shared right. that because we're here. We're Business TV Network. We right. are exposing your business to the world. Right. So that is such a great right. fit for us, and we're so right. glad that you shared right. that. Well, you. We know there's so much more information that you could right. share with us. Um, we know we want to have him back, but we want to have him back with the questions that you have out there. So we want to make sure that when you all watch this episode, give us your comments, give us your questions, because we want to make sure that we invite right. you back to share some more absolutely. wonderful information. Absolutely. We certainly appreciate you joining absolutely. us today. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely, absolutely. It. Everyone, make sure that you go to his website again Nakia Malicio 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 right I knew I was going to get it right get it right okay. at some point okay. now and spell it again for them one more time yes it's N A K I A M E L E C I O dot com Fantastic. NKM Consulting Group, LLC. Make sure that you reach out and get yourself educated and learn how to invest in your business and grow your business. Again, thank Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Everyone, want to make sure that you share this with your friends, share this with your your, um, colleagues as well. Go to bizlinks.tv to watch it again. Uh, Give us your comments. Also, go to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash bizlinkstv. Make sure when you go out there that you subscribe. That's so important. That way you will get information and notifications emails that let you know when our new episodes are released. You can also give us some comments and thumbs up. Go to our other social media properties, facebook.com, instagram.com. We're on Pinterest too, everyone, so you can reach out to us. You know how to find us. This is BizLinks TV. I'm Pamela Alexander, exposing your business to the world.